Conspiracy, deceit, mystery, intrigue, stealth, action, and puzzle solving. These are the many parts that make up Ion Storm's ambitious new effort, Deus Ex. Deus Ex is a massive 3D adventure game that is so open-ended, it is tough to categorize by today's standards. Warren Spector, the man behind the game, is a computer game development legend. He pioneered the hybrid first-person shooter adventure role-playing genre with the original System Shock, and he wants Deus Ex to have this same impact. It's uh, a game I've been thinking about for many, many years now, uh, set in something very much like the real world, uh, but with some James Bond espionage uh, aspects and uh, also some uh, X-Files conspiracy-oriented stuff. It's the conspiracy-oriented stuff that's got me all paranoid now. All the research is making me a little crazy. Um, what is it? What kind of game is it? Um, hard to categorize, actually, and I'm happy about that. A lot of people are saying, uh, next generation role-playing game. Yeah, sure, okay, maybe it's that. Uh, a lot of people are saying it's uh, uh, the, the logical extension of the adventure game genre. I'm comfortable with that, too. And We're taking that a step further with uh, Deus Ex. We're actually trying to make a game that's hard to categorize. Uh, the idea is to uh, take the best elements of role-playing and adventure and action and uh, merge them into one game and then put the player back in charge of, of how do I want to uh, interact with the world. Instead of forcing players to, to guess how the designer wanted them to play, we're letting them decide. A thick tapestry of mystery and intrigue surrounds the game's plot. From the opening scene, the truth is vague. Even the protagonist's name is in First question. First of all, J.C. Denton is his code name, and you're going to get to give him his real name, and that's going to come into play in the actual game. Um, but uh, we'll call him J.C. for now. Uh, he's um, the second, actually, uh, of, of his kind. He's a nano-augmented agent. He's not just an ordinary guy. Uh, he's got uh, nanotechnological marvels wandering, wandering around in his bloodstream and in his body uh, that can give him uh, abilities far beyond those of mortal men, as they say. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's working for an organization called UNATCO, uh, the United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition, uh, fighting what he thinks is evil. And as he uh, investigates this evil, he starts going, wait a minute, you know, some of these evil guys are making a little sense. And some of these guys I work for, maybe they're not making quite so much sense. So it's, it's all about shades of gray. I mean, one of the things I really wanted to do was not have uh, ultimate evil and, and all that kind of stuff that's so typical of games, you know. So we're, we're trying for something a little bit, a little bit more subtle. But, uh, you know, in the end, there, there's some bad guys you defeat. And, uh, to bring his yeah. bold vision of Deus Ex to life, Warren Spector chose the Unreal 3D graphics engine as a foundation. While this technology alone is impressive, it is the additions that IronStorm have developed that cover new ground. We, we took Unreal, um, I mean, it was the best combination of performance uh, designer tools, which are absolutely critical. Uh, they promised a support the, that they've delivered on. Um, it's marvelously commented, documented, and uh, extensible. I mean, it's a, it's a really nice engine. Um, and we've added all sorts of you know, role playing and, and uh, adventure elements. We've added a conversation system, inventory system, uh, the nano augmentation system I described, all sorts of 2D interface things that didn't exist. Uh, it, we, we've added a lot, but the best part is we haven't had to change a lot of Unreal. Uh, it's, it was a really great starting point. Character development will play a key role in progressing through the game, and the system that Deus Ex employs is unlike any other. You know, everything in Deus Ex is designed to differentiate one character from another. And we have several systems designed to do that. Uh, one of them is uh, the nanotechnological augmentations. Um, so for example, um, one of the things you're going to have to do during the game is you'll find these um, uh, augmentation canisters, is what we're calling them. And you'll have to decide uh, when you find one, am I going to use the firmware in this, uh, this canister uh, to, to become the guy who sees in the dark and can see um, uh, heat sources? Or am I going to be the guy who uh, can zoom in on, on things far away and see, um, uh, get targeting information. Okay, you have to decide, am I targeting guy or see in the dark guy? Uh, similarly, you'll have to decide, am I gonna be the, uh, the person who runs and jumps farther and faster, or am I gonna be the person who moves silently no matter how fast he moves? Although you can wield a host of deadly weapons, many of them are non-lethal. In this game, you don't have to kill everything, and sometimes you'll be better off if you don't. We've got, uh, you know, about 20 weapons. Uh, 
of various sorts, uh, many of them non-lethal, many of them quite lethal. Um, you know, they, they're broken down into uh, uh, various categories. I mean, low-tech weapons, uh, pistol, uh, rifle, uh, demolitions, and heavy weapons. And we have a skill associated with each of those, so we're going to make you choose that, too. I mean, if you're the guy who puts all the points into, into pistol skill, you may be a great, great pistol shot but pick up uh, a law, you know, an anti-tank weapon, you might not be quite as good with it. Um, so even there, you're going to have to make some choice. But the, the key for me, I mean, the, one of my favorite things about the game is um, you can say, I'm going to be the guy who doesn't kill people, <laughs> you know? Um, I, using the non-lethal capabilities is actually a lot of fun, and it gives you a completely different experience than the guy who just goes around and says, OK, I want to play this like it's play. The version that was shown to us was only 60% complete, and thus the game will change a bit before it is released. But the conspiracy is now out in the open, and it's just a matter of time before we're all deeply involved.